If I had to ask you what 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4 is, well 95% of you watching this would have no problems over here. You would say, hey, but we need to get a common denominator, and that is correct. So what is the common denominator between 3 and 4? Well, the lowest one we could find is 12. And if you don't, if, sometimes if you're struggling to find a common denominator, just multiply these two together. Alright, so what would the next step be? Well, the lowest common denominator is 12, which means that we need to convert both of these bottom parts into 12. And so we would convert the 3 into a 12 by timesing by 4. But what you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. And then you would have to convert this 4 to a 12 by timesing by 3. And what you do to the bottom, you do to the top. And so now we're going to end up with 4 over 12 plus 3 over 12. And then once your denominators are the same, you can simply put them as one denominator and you can say 4 plus 3. And in this case, it won't always be like this, the 4 and the 3 can go together and so we end up with 7 over 12. And so what's the common denominator over here? Well, remember if it's hard for you to see, you just multiply them together and so that's xy. So we need to be able to turn both of them into xy. So we're going to have to multiply this part with y and what you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. And we're going to need to multiply this part with x. So what you do to the bottom, you do to the top. And so what we end up having then is y over xy. And on the right hand side, we have x over xy. Now that the denominators are the same, we can turn it into one denominator. And we can say x plus y. Now here's where people get confused. When I ask them what the common denominator is, they try to tell me that it's x. Well, I understand why, because you see x in both of these. However, this is something you need to keep in mind. If they don't look exactly the same, then they are completely different. So this is almost the same as saying 1 over a plus 1 over b. If this was the case, what would your common denominator be? Well, it would be ab. So what is the common denominator going to be for this? It's going to be x and x plus 1. You just put them together. So what does this one still need so that it can become the same as the common denominator? Well, it still needs to be multiplied with x plus 1. And what you do to the bottom, you do to the top. What does this one still need? Well, it still needs x. And so you times the top and the bottom with x. And so what that's going to give us at the top is just going to be x plus 1 over x x plus 1. You never want to multiply out your common denominator. You leave it just like that and then at the, on the right hand side you're going to be left with x and x plus 1. Now the denominators are the same so we can write it as one big common denominator and at the top we can say x plus 1 plus x. If anything at the top can go together then put it together. So x and x can become 2x. Remember, it's only if you're multiplying that it would become x squared. And then we would have that plus 1 over there. And that would all be written over the common denominator, which is x and x plus 1. Notice we do not multiply out the common denominator.